Welcome everyone to what many people consider to be the loudest arena in America, the Rutgers Athletic Center, a.k.a. The Rack. And if familiarity breeds contempt, it should be a very contentious matchup. A couple of Big East rivals, Villanova, taking on Rutgers. Let's take a look at the bracket. The winner of this matchup goes on to New York. This is the first half of a double dip on ESPN2 later on tonight. It'll be Hawaii taking on Michigan. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Brad Doherty. Thanks for coming aboard. Rutgers fans, the band players already contemplating jumping on the train, taking a 45-minute train ride up to Penn Station for the next round. Meanwhile, Villanova playing some red-hot basketball. Important when you look at the fact that 10 of their top 14 are either freshmen or sophomores. That's a great point, Mark. Very young basketball team. And this team has enabled itself to gain some experience by playing postseason basketball. They've won four out of their last five. If their season had have ended, at the Big East Conference tournament, then this team would not be gaining this valuable experience to build upon for next year. Should be an outstanding matchup, though. And one of the players that has helped prolong their season, Curtis Sumter, part of our Star Watch brand. Curtis Sumter's had an outstanding season. Extremely versatile basketball player who can post up, rebound the ball, as well as shoot the out shot. You look at Hervé Lamanzana, maybe one of the most difficult matchups in all of college basketball. 6'10", rangy, plays the defense, shoots the threes, does it all. But a little bit of question about his health status tonight. As for Ricky Shields, there is no question as to how healthy he is. Come down for career high performance in his last run. Back with more after this. ESPN 2's presentation of the postseason NIT. Brought to you by Audi. In technology, performance, and design, our goal remains constant. Never follow. And Tom Clancy's Rainbow 6-3, this year's hottest action game. Welcome back, everyone, to the Rack, Piscataway, New Jersey. Villanova taking on Rutgers, the winner of this game. Moves up the turnpike about 45 minutes from here on the Jersey Turnpike to play at Madison Square Garden in the semifinals of the NIT. And let's take a look at the Villanova starting lineup. A great lineup, Brad, when you look at their guards. Four out of their five players actually average in double figures. Yeah, Foy and Nardi both do a good job out there on that perimeter, take care of the basketball. Uh, Nardi considers himself an old school basketball player, that's why he told him. So he likes to take care of it, make things simple. Meanwhile, Gary Waters, the head coach in his third season at Rutgers. Rutgers has changed up its starting lineup a little bit of late. Quincy Doobie, number five, usually comes off the bench, but for the last couple of games, he has started and is really lit it up. Had 15 against West Virginia a couple of nights ago. Before that, had 25. Well, as a, as a freshman, he struggled earlier in the season with his defensive play. And as that has gotten better, he's earned minutes on the basketball court because he's tremendous offensively. Well, there were some questionable statuses uh, surrounding some possibilities surrounding Lamazana, who took the opening jump. And he ain't looked pretty good. He twisted his ankle yesterday. The Rutgers center as the Scarlet Knights throw it away. There he is, number one, the 6'10", smooth shooting forward. But he moved pretty good on that opening tip. There he did. Twisted that right ankle in practice, but hopefully as it gets a little, little heat in it, a little warmth in it, may be tough when he has to come out. But he'll keep moving, maybe be very effective. Frazier inside, lost the handle and got it back for Villanova. Oh, Frazier at 6'9", does a great job. He's got almost the prototypical big man, postman game. When he catches it in low, he, a lot of times he'll go up nice and strong and try to finish on a rebound. He won't bring it down to the floor. Really has improved, too, as that knee has gotten better and stronger. He's improved. 6'9", sophomore, former high school All-American. McDonald's All-American was hampered by injuries earlier, especially this season when underwent surgery on his knee back in May. Then he came down with a stress fracture in his heel in December. And there was actually some question as to whether they might redshirt him at some point during the season. Spent some significant time rehabbing that knee, getting it better. Now they've got Ed Pickney back on the bench who's going to be able to work with this young man. He should get much just better and better as time goes on. Second turnover of the ball game. Meanwhile, for Rutgers, that one against Ricky Shields. There's a look at Eddie Pickney. And uh, boy, you flash back to 1985. That guy right there had quite a night on the final four against Georgetown. Quite a, quite a season that year. I mean, they played outstanding basketball. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, some, a lot of people realize they had four guys on that basketball team that were, you know, NBA prospects. So, outstanding oh. basketball team, great coach. Foy bottled up underneath. 
There's Alan Ray. He is the top scorer for Villanova, and he has a sweet stroke from outside. Well, I'll tell you what, Alan Ray uh, also will look for shot opportunities, which makes him that much more difficult to guard. He's very patient at times, but as the game goes on, he'll pull up in transition and shoot three-point shots. He'll come off screens, getting bumped, shooting three-point shots. That is tough to defend. Shields drives into the paint, and his foul, the blocking foul, called against Randy Ford. That's his first personal foul. One more look. Foy, see uh, Alan Ray slip down there. And Foy just didn't quite get up and under. Nice and square to, to Ricky Shields. He kind of got that shoulder into him. you got to have that body lined up to be, take that charge head on. Ricky Shields going to the foul line. A 78% free throw shooter. Had a career high 26 points a couple of nights ago in their victory over West Virginia. Connecting on 5 of 6 from downtown. That one halfway down and out. Shields the team's leading scorer coming into the game at 15 points per. Well, Ricky Shield does a good job moving without the basketball. He's got you know, more and more comfortable with the offense that Coach Waters has installed here. And now he's become a leader on this basketball team along with Lamazon. Second meeting of the season between these two and uh, the last time they met. Rutgers defeated Villanova 71 to 68 back on January the 28th. Shields had 19 in that game and uh, that's Ray, keeps his hand up for the pose and is feeling the groove early. And yeah, that Rutgers game back uh, back earlier in the year was not even close. I know the score doesn't signify that. It seems like it's a good ball game, but Rutgers just hammered for that. Oksani driving to the cup and he's fouled by Frazier. John Oksani will get two at the line. See, Nardi makes a nice quick pass right across the, the head of that zone. Or head of the defense, I should say, and uh, no one there. You got to get over, get those feet moved, get in front of the shooter, and make him pass the ball. Make him think that you're at least in the area. So when he catches it, he's not interested in shooting. He's interested in being a conduit. Oksani, one of a couple of seniors, perhaps playing their last game, trying to prolong their seasons. He and Lamazana both starting seniors. Oksani, one of those guys who does a lot of the intangible things that don't always show up in the box score. That time. A tangible benefit, but still just a 54% free throw shooter. Made him count that time. Well, he made a really nice move down into that defensive area. That left hand strong off the glass. You know, Villanova spent a lot of time in shoot around working around and working against that Rutgers press, but they turned it over that time. Lamazani rejected underneath. Sumter knocked that ball away. Lamazani's moving a little sluggishly, but still trying to get in there and do what he can do. Sumter a little eager, lost the handle the first time, got it back for the bucket. Curtis Sumter averaging 14.3 per game. Team's leading rebounder at seven per. With ten rebounds in the first half against Virginia last time out for this basketball team, so he can flat get after it on the glass. Ricky Shields. Do you see where he shot that one from, Brad? I don't know if that was a pass or whatnot, but he was about 40 miles outside the uh, radar zone there when he shot that one. Went right to Oksani for one of those room service layups and putbacks. Yes, he knew he had board strength, so he's going to take that opportunity. Mike Nardi, the point guard for Villanova. This is a bit of a homecoming for him. He's from nearby Linden, New Jersey. Sumter on the give and go with Frazier. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be Rutgers ball. Look at where Shields shot this one from. Clearly not in their offense. I mean, man, oh man, that's eight, nine, ten feet behind the arc. Not a quality shot. I'm sure he'll have a conversation with Coach Waters about that. Yeah, if that's in their offense, that's a lot of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of freedom. Puts a lot of, a lot of pressure on your uh, percentages, too. Doobie with the pull-up over Nardi. Got a fortuitous roll and gets his first bucket of the ball game. Doobie made all-conference all-freshman from Brooklyn, New York. The lead is down to one. We talked about Quincy earlier in the ball game. But, uh, his ability to get more minutes. And it's just a matter of getting better as an old ball defender. You know, as a freshman basketball player, no matter which position you play, you struggle defensively with the speed of this game. And he has made the adjustments and earned more point time. And it's Doobie that took the starting job away from Joel Wigan, the junior from the Bronx, who will be coming in off the bench tonight. Randy Ford to inbound. Up to Sumter. Back to Ford, one of the guys that can really make his own shot for Villanova. That ball closed down. Looked like it went off of his leg. It did. Excellent defense right there by Rutgers. Collapsing down on top of Ray when he went baseline. The appropriate action followed. The double team giving him nowhere to go. The defender stepped on the baseline then or didn't let it go baseline. So good job. A double team. Webb, the point guard, an offensive foul called against Marquise Webb. That's one of the holes that Gary Waters feels they can improve 
next year. They've got a point guard coming in, and uh, he feels right now they don't have a true quote unquote point guard. Webb, although, has been doing a fine job at times this season. Well, Webb has done a, a really good job, but you're right. This guy's got to be a handler of the ball. Frazier, meanwhile, inside with his first bucket. Villanova back up by three. Rutgers comes in 18 and 12 overall. Villanova 18 and 16. Amazana kicks it out to the wing, gets it back on the repost. Oh, and one. Herve Lamazana with a circus shot. I'll tell you what, he's getting a lot of body attention from Sumter and Frazier down there. We talked about him in open as well. He's healthy. Mark, he's just a difficult matchup. You know, 6'10, 220, but he's so athletic. He's so good with the basketball, fundamentally sound, that you don't know who to put on him. A three man, he's too big for that. A, you know, a four guy, he's maybe a little too too big for a four guy as well. You put your center on him, he's too quick for that guy. So tough matchup. Made third team all Big East this year. Knocks down the foul shot. He shoots 70% from the free throw line. And we're off to a pretty good start for both teams. Offensively knotted at 10. And this is the 26th meeting all time between these two crews. Tied at 10. The winner of this game travels up the turnpike to play at Madison Square Garden in the NIT semifinals next week. There are 24 teams still playing men's college basketball. Only 24. The Big East well represented in both tournaments right now. Considering that uh, Big East was not really considered to be a very, very strong conference this year, a good conference, uh, really came on strong. I think uh, halfway through the season, a lot of people started to realize how good a conference that was, and readjusted their sights on it. Yeah. Villanova women's team losing last night, the Rutgers women's team losing last week. Oh. Sumter had it knocked loose, out of bounds. It'll be Rutgers ball. No, now they're going to say. It's the Villanova ball. I'm not sure that anybody touched that, Brad. That was an excellent pass. <laughs> I mean, look at that pass. Well, a lot of, you know, nine times out of ten, Sumter's going to finish that ball, but Lamanzana got over and got his hand on it to knock it away and finish a great playoff. Boy and Frazier, a little two-man game pick and roll. Hardy looking inside to Frazier. Hook shot. Oh, he got a foul. Look like he got hit. Like Let him play a little bit That's inside. Great. Let him go at it. Doobie for three. Tough shot. Puts a lot of pressure on the, you know, his offensive teammates because there's no rebounding. Now you got to turn in half stride, start running the other end of the floor to defend. That is in the scouting report, though. They will pull up, as we've seen early from anywhere. Not afraid to shoot. Hardy inside to Sumter. He walked with it. That's the fourth turnover of the ball game for Villanova. Really up into Sumter's grill, not giving him any space to create that speed matchup. You know, that, that he likes. He likes to use his quickness on other big guys. So, really getting tied into him. Lomitz on his every step, and uh, he's struggling down low. Rutgers with the ball, chance to take the lead. Ruby making his third consecutive start with the ball. Blows by Nardi. He got the finger roll. Oh, what a nice touch. Had Frazier coming from the weak side to try to block that shot. And the young man still had enough. Of an angle to put a nice little touch on that ball. Good shot. A career high 28 against Temple two games ago in their opening round game. And for the third consecutive contest, Rutgers playing a familiar foe that they defeated during the regular season. So if nothing else, that would provide a little bit of confidence. Here's Sumter on the wing. Hardy for three. Maybe playing a little bit tight. Has a lot of friends and family watching this one. Well, you see him come off that screen. He, he had his mind made up. He was going to shoot it. And the defender was there. It had been a great opportunity to pass the ball and swing, but a tough shot. Foul on the play against Villanova. It's going to be against Randy Ford. That's his first personal team fourth. Well, Randy Ford is really strong up top. He's physically he, he handles a lot of the guards he plays against just because of strength. And he just kind of gave a little chuck right there to... <laughs> As Mr. Shields sent him flying. Boy, going to take a seat now, and into the ball game comes Snowden. Derek Snowden, the six-foot senior from Baltimore, averaging about three points per game. Snowden's also one of those gentlemen, young men who underwent knee surgery, and bouncing back to that. You know, struggled a little bit earlier this season, was trying to get his legs back up and under, and they started to play better. Not sure there's a team in America, Brad, that has lost as many heartbreakers this year and as many close games as the Wildcats have. That was the 14 foul against Rutgers. It's a total of seven games by a total of 10 points that they lost in one period of time. 
It's really, really, it's tough, tough time finishing off ball games, but this is a young basketball team. They got an excellent coach in Jay Wright. Well, I tell you, they're really going to be you know, better. There's so many teams I've said that about this year with all these young players. Next year's going to be something special. They do well to keep feeding Alan Ray. He hits his third three-pointer of the ball game, and that guy's really starting to do a lot more, more than just shoot. Jay Wright went to him about a month and a half ago when they were mired in a three-game slump in February and said, you know what? You have to start doing the things that embody Villanova basketball. You're going to be one of the leaders. The dunk that time by Rutgers' Adrian Hill. Adrian Hill, the recipient of a wonderful little feed, put him in a position where he can catch it and finish. And he takes care of everything else. You're right, though, about Alan Ray. He reminds me a lot of Tim Pickett, Florida State. The type of guy who can take some really tough shots and bake them. You know, it's hard to, hard to defend him. That time off the mark. Rutgers looking for the hit ahead. Wigan on the pull-up, partially ooh. blocked by Sumter. And here's Nardi in a hurry. Nardi in rush hour traffic got it to go. Well, Sumter went down hard down there. He went up to block that shot, got his foot clipped, landed on his hip, but he's up. Nardi weaving through traffic. Excellent play by Nardi to get that ball up on the glass. Nice little touch up. Defender bearing down on him. That was his first bucket of the ball game. Villanova leading by one with 12.43 to go. On the line, a trip to New York City. And the second. Came off that screen. I had no idea he was going to shoot that basketball. You know, I thought Doobie was coming around with a curl, go to the basket, maybe make a pass. That is an unbelievable tough shot, and he gets fouled. You got to get up on those shooters once they cross midcourt, Brett. I, I That's scary. You, these guys are not afraid to put the ball up. See him curl. He curls off of a nice screen, and uh, I tell you, going away from the basket, floating to the opposite corner, a little fade away from about 25 feet. Doobie going to go to the foul line, try and complete the four-point play. He's an 82% free throw shooter, and there was a little bit of speculation. Oh, man, it just and that looks like we got a line, lane violation against Rutgers. Yeah, uh, a Hill just came out of the block. And turns the ball over. He had given him the ball, let him shoot, and uh, Adrian decided to come down court for something and create a turnover. Finish up what I was saying about Doobie, Brad. There was a little bit of speculation that he might transfer it. But that in no way had anything to do with him getting the start a couple of days ago in the last two games. Here's Foy on the drive. Rejected by Lamazana. Out of bounds. It'll be Rutgers' ball. Lamazana's really a defensive terror in there. I mean, anytime a shot goes up, he's contesting it. Give him a lot of, a lot of credit because I saw him shooting earlier and he was not. He was grimacing every time he made any type of move. So he brings me a lot of courage. Rutgers is 15 and 2 at the rack this year, 18 and 12 overall. A nice bounce back year for Gary Waters and his coaching staff. He feels that the program is pretty much right where it should be, or where he might have expected it to be after a couple of seasons. Well, following our game here, ESPN 2's NIT quarterfinal double dip continues. Hawaii takes on Michigan with another ticket to New York on the line. For in-depth NIT tournament coverage, check out ESPN.com. Hit NIT. Back to the basketball game. Tommy Amaker's got the Wolverines looking to, to advance on down, get a little experience. Oh man, Frazier put Adrian Hill in jail and dunked on him. Put him on his hip, took him for a ride, didn't have a saddle. <laughs> Four nice points for Frazier. Now, but tying the game at 17. Talking about uh, Tommy Amaker and Bernard Robinson Jr., those guys up there really doing a good job. Of, you know, this is the first chance they've had to get in the postseason play in umpteen years right. and they're taking advantage of it. It's a big, big difference when you know that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Boy, it really does. And one of the great, bright, young coaches, Tommy Anderson, all of college basketball, has got a, well, once again, a very young team, one senior with Robinson uh, graduating up there. So they're looking for some big things out of those kids. Nardi out top. And the screen from Sheridan. Here's Foy. Five on the shot clock. Foy roughed up inside. Snowden with a putback, and he's fouled. Well, if you're, if you're point guard or two guard for Rutgers, you got to feel great when someone drives. I mean, you almost want to channel your man into that lane with Lamazana and Hill. Down there. They try to block everything, and they get their hands on a lot of shots. That's the first team foul, actually third team foul against Rutgers. First personal against Quincy Doobie. And Derek Snowden, the senior from Baltimore, goes to the foul line. This is the first nine games of the season with a torn ACL. 
suffered that in August. It was pretty amazing, actually, that he came back as early as he did this season. Yeah, he did. He came back in a hurry. Uh, had an opportunity to play and help this basketball team until his senior year. He came back a little too quick, I think, because he really you know, he slowed him down a little bit in his rehab. But, hey, he's here playing today. And, uh, Great opportunity to play in the postseason. Always a lot of urgency, Brad, when you're a seat. Yeah, that's right. Doobie on the wing, tied at 17. Oksani on the pick and pop. Nice feed inside and the slam by Hill. Well, we know what Mr. Hill does when he catches it down low. He finishes. Oksani made a nice move. I thought he was going to throw a little hook over top. Drew the defender to him and uh, made a nice pass to his teammate. This Rutgers team passes the ball well on the interior, which is a difficult thing to teach, but obviously Coach Waters has spent a lot of time. Alan Ray gets it back out to Snowden for three, and Snowden drops it like it's hot. Well, it's a big three right there. Snowden, once he gets his confidence going, because he, you know, obviously he plays better than anybody would, but he's really a young man. If he can make one or two shots, it really seems to escalate for him. Shields splash down for three. Both teams sizzling white hot, Brad, from the field. Rutgers shooting 57%. Villanova shooting 50%. This, is, this game is a shooter's game, obviously. Both of these teams coming down, running off of curls, catching the basketball, ready to shoot the ball. Not just thinking about it, but ready to get rid of it. Making some big shots. They want to make that train ride up to New York City for the finals and semifinals. That time, Sumter. Knocks down the foul line jump shot. He's got four in the ball game. Something averaging about 14 for Really like Sumter's game. I we were bragging on him earlier. He's the type of kid to really get going. Oh, not again. Does he Whoop. feel it? Whoop. It's raining threes. Get your umbrellas out. Oh, goodness. Shields with seven. <laughs> How do you guard that? You can't. That's the problem. That's why these coaches have gray hair. That is so difficult to defend because the kids are building out defensively. And you're, you know, almost if you look at a shell drill where you're supposed to be, you know, seeing man sink ball and rotating up to the ball, the guy's 30 feet from the basket. And Ray walked with it that time. Might have been trying to get a little bit of get back, a little payback. Big turnover for Villanova. Meanwhile, Ricky Shields is just on fire. He has enough candy for everybody. Pull up to the buffet table, boy. He got enough to feed the needy so far. Back with more after this. Yeah. Rutgers leading by three. Brad doing a good job freeing up those shooters, too. Yeah, Rutgers has done a good job. What they do with Quincy Doobie is they run a double screen. You'll see up at the top of your, your picture here. Lamanzana steps up top. There's the screen. He runs off that nice curl. The idea is to go down the lane and make the big guy, Frazier, step up to him, give a nice little pass to Mr. Hill for a dunk. But uh, I, I take it that's a layup for Mr. Dude because he is flat knocking him down from right that spot. Made the all-big East all-rookie team. I can see why. Yeah. 43% uh, on the season from downtown. Going over, tried a little half-court trap. Doobie on the baseline now. Got hung up in the air and turned it over. Up Snowden. Nice feed inside to Frazier. Almost had a chance for a three-point play. Snowden making a few things happen at the defensive end. He's, br he's bringing some real positive energy to the Villanova basketball team right now, which, you know, Rutgers has done some spectacular things, especially, especially with Ricky Shields making some big shots. But, you know, Villanova's in this ball game. They're right where they need to be. And Sumter's still trying to get his game going. They've got some great opportunity. They just got to take advantage of it. That foul was on Joel Wigan, his first personal, team's fourth, with 8.34 to go in the first half. Winner of this one goes on to New York in the semifinals. Nova now one for six from the foul line. Really like the play that Villanova ran, though, simply because Lamanzana's on the bench. Great time to go inside, take advantage of your, your big strength. Uh, Frazier caught that right around the goal, got the foul. So far, Lamazana's uh, bad wheel hasn't been a factor in the game either, Brad. No, I mean, I just don't think he's going to play a whole lot once he's six. And for another chance at a dunk, Adrian Hill will do anything. His third one of the game, he's got six points. Got to be impressed with Adrian Hill. He's just, he's staying around the basket. He's not looking to catch it in the mid-range and shoot a little jump shot. He catches it, he comes to the goal every time. He's the one that made two key free throws late to ice the game against West Virginia in their last run. Another tremendous interior pass from Exani. He did a great job shoveling that ball under. Alan Ray missing the left-handed layup. Villanova 
Calling Cole that time, and here's Wigan. Shields. No. Can he? <laughs> yes, he can. Oh, man. <laughs> Rockin' Villanova's world right now. He's got 10. My goodness. Pull the pants and use that fire extinguisher, baby. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Pull the pin on the fire extinguisher so we can use it. Man, these are not your garden variety three-pointers, wow. folks. These are fadeaway, man, hanging on you. Nothing but nylon. Get some. A seven-point lead for Rutgers, approaching seven minutes to go in the half. Frazier fouled inside by Oksani. Every time he goes down to the court, Head coach Jay Wright kind of holds his breath. That is ev ev there's everyone else on the staff. That's a second personal foul against Sean Aksani. Fifteen foul. We're going to have to find a way to slow down Ricky Shields. What do you suggest, okay. Mark? What are you, what? <laughs> You're sitting over there with Coach. What are you telling him? Uh, a little boxing one, maybe. Maybe, uh, I don't know. When someone... You know, as a coach, that's a problem. You know, when, when someone's making shots like that, obviously they're going to cool off. So, you know, you just have to ride that wave out. But you can possibly do some things, like maybe bump him a little bit more when he comes off of the screen. When he runs off of that pick, the big guy has to do what we call showing, whereas he steps out and slows down, you know, impedes the progress. But then you open yourself up to a world of other problems, like getting back door. Frazier knocks down the free throw. Nova hanging in, trailing by five when we come back. Casual. Rutgers leading by five, and Brad, right now you got to carry around Ricky Shields with a set of those prongs. He's flammable. Ooh, I mean, he's <laughs> catching the basketball mark in almost the exact same spot every time. But what's happened, he's getting curled up off the bottom. He's getting a little screen, and the defender is just a step too low, too late. Well, not that time. Snowden was right with him. And he's just grilling. He's hot. He's uncomfortable right now. Got to get up into him, bump into him, get this pass, do something. You know, I'm looking through my sheet of uh, contestants in the upcoming three-point shooting contest in San Antonio down at the Final Four. Uh, I think I might have to write Ricky Shields in as a write-in vote. <laughs> he's, my, he's, my new, uh, he's my new MVP. <laughs> he was five for six in the last game from downtown in the win against West Virginia. A career high 26 in that one, and the meter's still running. He's got 10 right now. Well, it still wasn't a fluke. He's got a good touch. That basketball. Little pick and pop. Lamazana takes it to the cup. That's that athleticism we talked about early in the open. He catches the ball. It's wide open. The defense is going to close, though. And he's still able to maneuver around unscathed and get a nice lane. Lamazana, great story, came to the United States from the Ivory Coast in Africa at 14 years old. He's made himself quite a player. Already out top. Going over. Down by seven. Snowden cut off at the baseline nicely that time by Adrian Hill. Adrian Hill doing a nice job at both ends of the court, Brad. This is a well-coached basketball team. When a team will commit themselves to shutting that baseline off and not worrying about their own individual man, that means that, that's been drilled into these kids' heads and they're accepting what Coach Waters wants from them. That's twice that they've had significant stops on that baseline. Rutgers has made its last seven consecutive shots. Got to get up on these guys. Wigan out top. Well, Wigan, who was supplanted in the starting lineup three games ago. Shields on the wing, guarded by Nardi. Alan Lamazana. Webb breaking the streak of seven in a row. Here's Nardi. Good look by Webb. Lamazana sharing the basketball. Gave a great opportunity for a pack of Can't handle it. It's a poor pass, too close. You know, it's too too difficult to make a bounce pass throughout the, throughout a, a defensive stand like that. The guy catch the ball. Seventh turnover for Villanova, who trailed by seven right now with 5:35 to go in the first half. The winner of this game goes to New York. Trying to get a quick hit on the basket. I mean, even Sumter who caught that ball is underneath the goal. I see Nardi just go ahead and shoot that basketball. Look at that move. Lamazana, a little show and go. Look at his athleticism. I mean, that's just a cut. Missed the tap. Partially blocked underneath. And strong rebound by Will Sheridan. And Lamazana took it away. Plays with such a, an even keel. You know, he doesn't get overly excited. So he's so talented physically that you don't realize he's playing hard. He just makes everything look so easy. Shields. Oh, boy. 
Rock me, Ricky! Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ricky Shields is 4 of 5 from downtown. Oh, man, that is incredible. Ooh, ooh, man, I mean, you know, he, he's out there. He's moving around. He comes to, once again, that double screen. He rolls off of La Manzana. He just needs a fraction of space to drill you. I mean, my goodness, man. Woo! Oh, oh, oh. Ricky Shields uh, with a, an array of religious themes on his tattoos, on his arms and shoulders. And uh, I tell you right now, someone better pray that they can throw water on him and cool him off a little bit. Well, folks, Sawgrass has dreaded 17th hole of weight. Well, biggest guns, including Tiger Woods, B.J. Singh, John Daly, Davis Love III, Phil Mickelson, and Mike Weir. They came to the game's largest purse. ESPN has coverage of the Players' Championship, beginning with Sports Center at the Players' Championship at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, Thursday and Friday. And all this talk about Tiger being in a quote-unquote slump. Well... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> give me a break, man. I mean, he was the number one golfer in the world last year. Still year, is, wasn't he? Okay. still is. Okay. And, uh, Just wanted to check. You know, this the players consider, consider this to be their toughest test at Sawgrass because there's so much water on the course. Just barely over 7,000 yards. So it's not super long, but you've got to hit it in the fairway. The greens dry out, get hot. It's a tough, tough test for these guys. Rutgers is shooting 57 percent from the floor. Foul that time against the Scarlet Knights. Ricky Shields, though, in the last two games, has really been upping his offense. Averaging 15 on the season. Had 26 a couple nights ago against West Virginia, and on pace to surpass that right now. That last foul was against Marquise Webb, his second personal, team sixth. Shows you how you know, effective these kids can be when they get hot. I mean, he's taking some really tough shots. His defense, his defense is all around. He's already got into the lane. Sorry, Brad, and made the layup. Good job by Nardi. He went right down the gut of that lane, which you like to see from the point guard. Hopefully having someone step in to stop him so the point guard is the best passer can make a nice pass and finish. Nardi goes all the way to the basket. Out of bounds, it'll be Rutgers' ball. If not for a late-season swoon, you know, with about five weeks to go in the season, maybe a little less than that even, Rutgers was entertaining some serious thought about making it to the NCAA tournament. That's how well they were playing. Then they got a little bit sideways. Yeah, yeah, struggled a little bit there, like I said, right midway through the season. But very talented ball club. You know, it, uh, I've, I've always loved watching Lava John play. I just think he's so gifted. And uh, so much fun to watch. I mean, he can make that shot. Great pump fake. Knocks it down the jumper. That's beautiful basketball, man. When that guy gets in motion, he's just so talented. Brad, you'd know better than me, but they seem to spread the floor so well and really effective with the drive and kick. Here's Nardi. Yeah. Fouled going to the cup. They spread the floor, and what happens is, you know, you, as a defender, you know, you, you, as you're coaching a basketball team against them, you're telling guys, don't get caught up, don't get over, you know, don't overplay and get beaten back door. Well, what happens is Shields and those guys end up running off a double screen, and you're a step late because you're a step behind. You're not giving in to that spacing that they're trying to create. You move up on them, they go by you. That's why Hill has three dunks. Nardi, meanwhile, going to the foul line, shooting 84% on the season, missing that time. Mike Nardi out of nearby Linden, New Jersey, a six-foot freshman. Remember that nine, actually ten out of Villanova's top 14 players are either freshmen or sophomores, so they continue to get valuable playing experience in this NIT. He went to the same high school as La Mazzana. Oh, missed both of them, which you rarely see. Out of bounds, Rutgers ball. Villanova just three of ten from the foul line. And they trail by 10 with under four minutes to go. Back with more after this. With Digger Phelps, I'm Carl Ravitch on the Halftime Report. These stories, Kobe's accuser has her day in court. Day has ended. We'll let you know what happened there. The NCAA tournament will look at East Rutherford and Phoenix. Talk about some of the key matchups there. Find out what Billy Packer and Phil Martelli said to each other today. And also AM gets its new basketball coach. That's coming up soon. Digger? Well, Rutgers making a three. Ricky Shields, four from five. Villanova played by turnover, seven, but five to go. We'll see you soon, folks. Let's get back out to the game now. All right, Carl, back here, a 10-point lead for Rutgers, trying to improve to 19-12 and 12 on the season. But more importantly, the winner of this game moves on to New York for the NIT semifinals next week. This is uh, the second meeting of the year between these two teams. Rutgers winning the first meeting 
71 to 68 and time for Villanova to get busy they trail by 10 with 350 to go here in the first half well if you're Villanova you're, you're counting on the hot shooting hand that Rutgers had for the last 17 minutes to slow down a little bit maybe not they just got to stop somebody Brad they can't stop Adrian Hill either you understand not being able to stop the shots that Shields has made but Adrian Hill with four dunks four touches four dunks like that that's inexcusable that's poor defense obviously already out top this is the biggest lead of the ball game for Rutgers. And this is a place they like to call the Terror Dome at home 15 and 2 this year at the rack. Frazier rejected inside. Runs over Hill. Sumter. Halfway down and out. And it's Rutgers ball. Tough sledding at the offensive end for Villanova. Oh, it really is. Rutgers is bearing down defensively as well, but not giving up anything easy. Making it very, very hard just to try to move through there. Gary Waters in his third year as head coach, spent 22 seasons as an assistant at various places, and now has this program on the cusp, he feels, of where he wants it to be. Lamazana rejected by Fraser. Well, you like to see that a coach like Gary Waters has paid his dues. Has to play. Excellent pass by Nardi, leading Sumter to the glass to where he could be successful and finish. Sumter has six. Lead is back down to 10 points with 235 to go in the first half. I love it. We're, we're kind of sitting up above the court here. We've got several gentlemen that got a little bit of age on them. They're all Rutgers fans. Boy, they are chewing the officials out. <laughs> like they haven't had any, any leeway this season. Wow, this is great. I'm enjoying watching that. Hardy cut off going to the basket. And Ray for three. He started off hot, but subsequently has cooled down. Nice hesitation, missed the teardrop. They're trying to figure out how to guard Ricky Shields. Doobie with the run out. Whoa, man, I thought he might have took an extra step there. But, well, he did well to make the catch and the finish. Yeah, got a nice catch, got his composure back, gave a little fake like he was coming back towards the free throw line, a little hook over the top. Tough, boy. Man, these guys are good at this place. Only 15 and 2 in this building? Yep. Gary Waters has some scores on this team. Doobie for one. Once had 61 points in a high school game. Get this, he was 18 of 21 on threes in that game, Brad. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's hard to do by yourself. Alone in the gym. Oh. Sumter drawing a lot of attention, certainly not alone. And a blocking foul against Rutgers. Take your pick, it looks like it's going to go against Hill. Well, following our game, here's ESPN 2's NIT quarterfinal double dip continuing. Hawaii takes on Michigan with another ticket to New York to be punched. One of the nice stories of college basketball this year. That's the 18th foul against Rutgers. That one going against Adrian Hill. Sumter goes to the foul line, shooting 75% on the season. Sumter, a guy that did a lot of work in the offseason, no doubt he'll do it again, although he doesn't want to think about the offseason quite yet. Went to Pete Newell's big man's camp last year, and it really helped him with his footwork, Brad. Yeah, he's, he, his, said he, was out, work. he said he was out there, and all those guys were seven-footers, big old, strong guys, all NBA guys. He learned a lot about the footwork, how it's so important for a big kid to be able to move his feet. He's only six seven, but he can play seven feet. Has eight points in the ball game with 125 to go in the first half. Villanova down by 10. And Gary Waters is going to call a timeout. Well, you know, the last time a Big East team played against Villanova in the postseason, guess who it was? It was Georgetown. Flashback in the time machine, 1985. I think we remember this game, Brad. Man, absolutely. This was unbelievable. Like I say, everyone considered him to be such an underdog. See, Ed picked me over Patrick Ewing there. Coach Raleigh Massimino watching Easy Ed go to work. He finished up with 16 points. He was the final four most outstanding player as Villanova won that game against Georgetown, 66 to 64 and uh Ed told us before the game to be sure to show that because he wanted everybody to know he was skinny <laughs> at one time <laughs> put on just a few yeah, just, just, just a couple pounds but oh what an outstanding player the game before that they beat us and uh like i said we hadn't heard much of, about villanova that year they came into the the tournament and went through a couple of teams and they were just so good i remember Dwayne mclean was just unbelievable 
Uh, and it's look who else is here oh, tonight. Nice coach. He slipped in the watch. Got a nice tan, man, for a guy. Sure does, huh? He must be doing a little stuff down in South Florida somewhere <laughs> this time of year to have a tan like that. Well, you know, Jay Wright has done the same thing that Roller used to do, really fostering a family-type atmosphere. They always used to go over Raleigh's house for Sunday night dinners and pasta and hang out as a team. And Jay Wright really doing the same right now. Doobie from downtown. That's, those are the things. That's what makes this game in college basketball, college sports so special is the relationships that you foster. You know, if you have a great coach like a Coach Massimino or a Coach Dean Smith, those guys make sure that you guys stay together forever. And the friendship you know, becomes a family type situation. Well, Wigan missing the layup right at the tip of the cup. Quick outlet picked off nicely. Ricky Shields doing it all over the court. The full 94 by 50. He has been outstanding. Uh, great defensive play right there. I'm going to ask him for some popcorn before he goes in at halftime because he has flat done it all. Ten point lead for the Scarlet Knights. He'll be working on Nardi. Feels he can Ooh, take him in. Dude, dude, dude. Oh. Put him in the hole. Oh, man. He crossed him up, drawn him up, broke him up all in one play. Outstanding. Looks like, like one of those and one takes. There's some fractured fibulas on the court right now. <laughs> Something on the wing for three, a little bit strong. Back out to Nardi, two seconds to go, got to get it up. And he won't get it up in time. Quincy Doobie, a.k.a. the Q-Dog, with a late jump shot from the elbow to give Rutgers a 43-31 lead at the break. Watch this. Crossed up Nardi a couple of times. A little machine gun dribble, and he shot him down. 12-point lead for Rutgers, a trip to New York on the line. Right now, Carl Ravitch in the studio for the halftime report. Carl, something else. Shoot. Jonesy, indeed it was. Great shooting by Rutgers. And again, we'll see the second half in just a bit. The thoughts of Digger Phelps coming up shortly here on the Halftime Report. I'm Carl Ravage. The top stories of the day, the hearing in the Eagle uh, County Court, sexual assault. ESPN2's presentation of the postseason NIT. Brought to you by Odor Eaters. Put Odor Eaters in, kick foot odor and wetness out. And Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. with a chance for all of them to advance to the Final Four. All right, halftime is over. We'll take a break. Second half coming up. See if Ricky Shields cooled off or not. <laughs> 